Ali Reza and Parham have long been chess rivals, having both grown up in Iran playing in tournaments there. So any time they meet at the board these days, there's always that added level of tension and intrigue in their games. This one was taken from the World Blitz 2021, and Firuz has black here, so he goes in for this Nimzo Indian defence with bishop b4, and often black will give up that bishop for knight, but in compensation for that you gain good control over the e4 square, but it depends how white plays. So Parham goes down this main line here with e3, we have castles from Firuzja, and now Parham plays very much a sideline with bishop to d2, more common is bishop to d3 developing here, so this bishop looks a bit passive, stuck inside the pawn chain, developing like this, and oftentimes it will come to b2 to develop in that manner. But okay, white is still very solid here. Black now strikes in the centre with d5, a very typical break in these structures. Knight f3 from Parham, and pawn to b6. So long term, you want to play c5 as black, but if you play c5 immediately, then a3 is a strong response. You're forcing that bishop to give itself up, and after the recapture, white is doing quite well here with the bishop pair. But when you play instead with pawn to b6, you're preparing c5 later, but you're also actually trying to preserve this dark squared bishop, because it's a good piece now with these pawns committed to light squares in the center. So now we had the pawn takes on d5, the pawn recaptures, and the whole purpose of this exchange here was to now open up the c-file with rook c1 and pressure this backwards pawn and make c5 that little bit more unpleasant. So we had bishop to b7 now, harmonious development, bishop to d3, rook to e8 from black, and castles from white. And you now want to play c5 as black, but if you do this immediately, then a3 comes and you're forced to give up this bishop, which you don't want to do. So that's why the bishop first drops back, preparing c5. Now we had knight to e5, c5 comes from black, and pawn to f4 from white. So it cements this knight in the centre, it's a very attacking move, but it is a double-edged move, because if you can't prove an attack here as white, then you've now opened this line to your king, and you've weakened this pawn, which is now backwards. So Firuzja now develops with knight to c6, you don't want to give up this beautiful knight by capturing, and this pawn's under fire twice now, so that's why knight e2 defends that pawn. We had rook to c8 from black coming to that file, which is very likely to open. And now a beautiful positional move from Parham, it's actually the only move in the position that keeps advantage, and I'd encourage you to pause the video here and look for it to grow that positional understanding, and if you're enjoying this video, then do hit that subscribe button to never miss another. So bishop to e1 was played, a really nice idea. This is a bad bishop because it's on the same colour squares as its own pawns in the centre, and therefore Parham is seeking to bring it to h4, where it will then pin the knight and exert pressure here. And that's why Firuzja goes immediately with knight e4 here. He doesn't want to get pinned down here. So white has to respond accurately now. If you play a bit slowly, let's say with king h1, well now something like f6 could come, kicking this knight back and you're stumbling around the place, black will gain the initiative. So after knight e4, white correctly takes in the center, the pawn recaptures, and now a brilliant shot from Parham. If you want to pause and find it, please do so. He plays knight takes on f7, and Firuzja doesn't actually capture this one. So if he took with the king here, which is possible, queen b3 check comes, drawing the king out of its hiding place further. You obviously can't step to e6 because you're still in the line of check. If you come to e7 or f6, then both moves run into bishop h4, winning the queen. So you'd have to come to g6 instead, and there was a couple of good moves for white. There's knight to g3, there's pawn to f5, but the point being, you're forcing the king kind of around the board to places it doesn't want to be in, and this is blitz chess, so you don't want your king getting hunted after about 15, 16 moves. So instead of this, Firuzja didn't take the knight, he played queen into d5, now the knight dropped back into e5, and Firuzja actually chopped this dominant knight, the pawn recaptured, and he picked up this one on a2. So he's restored the material balance, but the problem here for black is that these pawns on f4 and e5 
are just so fluid moving down the board now and there's a big attack coming for white. So we had bishop to c3 now from Parham, although better would have been knight to g3, just opening the way for the queen to come to g4 immediately, because after queen to d5, which was played in the game, now you can go queen to g4 with a very big and fast attack. Instead, we had bishop to c3 here in this position, and after queen to d5, we had queen to e1 to keep those queens on the board. But this allowed Firouge to counterplay now with pawn to b5. So he's seeking to go b4, kick this bishop and get white backpedaling. And that's why we now had rook to d1 gaining a tempo against the queen. The queen dropped into c4 and now we had pawn to b4. So white is stopping black from playing b4 by occupying that square. And after the recapture here, this move has now freed up the d4 square for the bishop. So that one now jumps into d4. And the problem for black is it's just really hard to find a move now. There's these big threats of pushing down here and generating a quick attack. Probably best was bishop to d5 here, with the idea that after pawn to f5, queen to c7, say pawn to e6, you sit the bishop on the c4 square, which was just vacated by the queen. But even then, white's still doing very well with this big attack. But instead of this, Firouge just sought to activate that bishop by going rook to c7, freeing the c8 square, but f5 came anyway, bishop to c8 and pawn to e6 just blunting that bishop. Really horrible position now for black. So queen to a2 from Firouge, he wants rook c2 here to attack along this rank, hit this knight, but lovely calculation from Parham, he simply ignores it and goes queen to g3, because now if you go rook to c2, Bishop takes on g7 is just killing. If the bishop recaptures, then we have pawn to f6. It's game over. So instead of doing this, Firuzja noticed this and went rook to b7, holding the 7th rank. Now we had knight to f4, bringing more firepower into the attack. Bishop to d6. And now you can actually just play this quite slowly as white. You don't necessarily need to come crashing through immediately. So queen to g4 came, stepping out of the pin. Whoops. And now we had the capture here, the queen recaptured, rook to f8 trying to prevent this advance. We had queen to e5 centralizing, iron this pawn. And now black went back to e8, hitting this pawn to the if f6 you can actually take here. Even there white's doing okay, but there's no need to go in for this. Instead we had rook to c1, good positional chess, coming to the open file, activating another piece. Queen e2 now, and it's very hard to suggest any moves for black. There's just not a lot to be done here. And here's a lovely shot from Parham now, just eliminating defenders for the king. Rook takes on c8. The rook recaptures and pawn to f6. Now you don't want to be capturing here as black or queen takes, and there's tons of problems here on these squares. Firouge just tried queen to g4 instead, but there's still huge problems after f7 check. You also could have played pawn to e7. The king came to f8, and now the bishop came to c5, just simply winning an exchange here. This wasn't necessarily the most accurate way to play, but after the rook got chopped, the queen recaptured. What Parham saw here is that this is just a forced winning line after queen c5, because the king took this pawn, the queen captured here, and white simply a rook up. We had a couple more moves now, but the position is completely over. And after this move of queen to d4, Firuzja actually resigned. So an amazing win from Parham, and it just shows anything can happen in Blitz. If you enjoyed this video, then do hit here to subscribe. And to watch another amazing epic chess game, click here. Thanks very much for watching, and see you soon.